Now it's working, so uh, here we go. So um, I'm going to uh, look at walls, uh, edit the walls constraints, the final wall structure, just some tools, add design features. Yeah, okay. So, so uh, let's just take it outside this model for the moment because I'm just going to draw a standard wall. <coughs> so in the architecture tab, I can just uh, select wall and once I select wall you get all these uh, settings that appear along the top here like what level do we want to draw it on what's the height or the depth we want to have it at it's kind of standard it's standard is that it draws it on level one and it draws it eight meters high <coughs> so we can just start by doing that so I'm just gonna draw a wall like this off the side of the site doesn't matter how long it is or whatever I'm just setting up a wall <coughs> and uh, just the basics of it. Once you set up a wall, you can change it to any type of wall you want. So I could select it and come over here to the properties uh, dialog, and whatever walls are loaded into the project, I can change it to uh, to that type of wall. So I could change it to exterior 408 masonry. Uh, and depending on the settings of the wall, it might show or it might not show in a hidden view. But I change it to a realistic view, the materials will will show. So if I spin it around now. Something weird about my mouse. Uh, you can see that if you can see that on the screen there. No, not really. This bricks all, uh, it's too dark. I'll spin it around so it's facing the light. Uh. This mouse is weird. It's um, you need a mouse, man? Huh? No, it's something to do. With, I think it's I think it's been interfered with by some other radio radio mouse here or something. Anyway, never mind. So you can see. So it's got the. Uh, this is going well today. It's got the bricks on it now. You can see it. Thanks. Let's see if that makes a difference. Um, and if I select it again, I could come up here and change it to uh, exterior wood siding, which we which we played with last time. And this projector is not working. Oh, good God. Yeah, it's, it's actually, it's a screwdriver. You need to screw it in. This is what you call a slick presentation. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna have to hopefully hope this won't fall out. So just tell me if the screen goes black again, because this is just ridiculous. It's too tight over here. Anyway, never mind. So we can change the stuff like this, and then we can uh, we can come up here and you know change it to whatever there is in the uh, in the library at the moment. So that's fine. We can we can start with uh, with all this kind of stuff, <coughs> and that gives us the materials of the wall. But often you have a wall, and you don't want it to be completely uh, you know unconnected at eight meters. So if we select the wall, we have the option to, over here at the top, we've got a kind of panel called constraints. And that allows us to, first of all, change the uh, position of where we're drawing it, which we talked about last time around. At the moment, it's drawing on finish face interior. So it's drawing along the inside face of the wall. <coughs> I can change that to, you know, uh, finish face exterior. And you can see that the dot changes. So now I, when I move it, it's on the outside face of the wall. And that actually is quite a useful thing to know because if you select a wall here and you want to change it to another type of wall, and I'm going to do this in plan view because it just makes more sense in plan view. <coughs> if I change the uh, crop like this. So here's the wall I have over here. If I select it, you can see that the, the control point here is on the exterior. But if I change it to another type of wall, it will steep, it'll keep the control point in exactly the same position. So that has an impact. So if you're making a, a plan of a house and you decide to change the wall uh, build up, you know, what the wall is made of, you have to be careful about the control point that you choose because it might expand into the house or out of the house. So you, have to be, you have to figure out what you want it to do. So usually what you want to do, if I just change that back again, is you don't want the house to get any smaller. 
so if I just continue this wall around, let's say we're making a, uh, a house like this, crazy shaped house. I'm going to make all of these the same type of wall, which is uh, this one. <coughs> if we have it at uh, finish face exterior, and I change it to a different type of wall, you can see that all the walls shunt inwards into the house. So they actually change the area of the house. And the area of the house is the most important thing when you're dealing with housing, because that a house is priced on the, u on the usable floor area internally. So if just by you know, playing around with Revit you kind of uh, change the area of the house, then, then the client is not going to be particularly happy because you've, you've basically reduced the value of his, of his house just by a simple mistake. So it's always something to, to take account of. Whenever you're changing the wall thickness, you should always change the, uh, the control of the location line to finish face interior, which means that the house will shunt outwards instead of inwards. Everybody got me? Kind of makes sense. Uh, anyway, it'll make more sense later. So that's one thing. So I'm going to select all the walls here. So I'm going to put the cursor on top, press tab, and I can click them so I select all the connected walls at the same time. And that means I can select and change them all at the same time so they all have the same t wall type. So that's quite a useful way to do it. So just put the cursor on top, press tab, and you can see it selects all the connected walls. And then you left click so you can then can, can, tra can change all of them at the same time. <coughs> I'm going to go back to the 3D view again. So now we've got this kind of weird house which is concrete on the inside and it's uh, timber on the outside. And if I go into an elevation view, <coughs> if we can see it there. No clip. Okay, we need to make a new elevation. I'm just going to make a new elevation up here to the house by going to View, Elevation, and I'm going to put an elevation here. So here's the box that we made, and here's the original house over to the left. And you can see we have these level lines that we made for the original house are still there. So we can use those to, uh, to control the height of the house. So at the moment it's set to 8 meters. So I could uh, use the same trick again in elevation view where I leave the cursor on top of the wall, press the tab button, and then left click. So I've selected all the connected walls. And then I can change the constraint. I can change the top constraint of the wall from 8 meters. I can just put it up to level 2, for example. So that means that the walls are now bound to that level. So if I want to change the level within the house, if I want to move this up, for example, the walls will automatically follow along. So that's quite important for, uh, for design changes because, um, because uh, you, uh, it means that you can make quick design changes. You can change level heights and so on, and the walls will stretch and you don't have to go back and uh, remodel the whole building uh, or change the stairs or whatever because the, st the stairs will also automatically connect and so on. Anyway, we'll get into the stairs later on. So that's one thing you can do with it. <coughs> the other thing we can think about here is we can, uh, if I go back into 3D view again, and we ha here we have our, our walls over here. Let's say we don't want it to be a completely square wall at the top. We can modify the shape of the wall as much as we want. And uh, again, whenever you want to change something in Revit, you select the element first of all, and then you get all the modification tools will automatically appear along the top here. If, if, if a tab turns green, it means it's active. So at the moment, modify walls is, is active just by selecting it. Then I can say edit profile. And once I do that, you see we get these kind of pink sketch lines that, that Revit likes to use when you're dealing with uh, you know, changing the shapes of, of stuff. So once you get sketch lines, you can go in there and you can just draw the shape of the wall that you want. So I could change it so that it looked like this, for example, which probably has relevance for the external wall for your, uh, for your, uh, your Knudsen project there. The only thing I need to remember is it needs to be one enclosed continuous loop. So that means I need to trim these lines 
so that they all join up together okay so I'm going to press this trim button up here and then I can just select this line and this line and it will trim the lines together like this and if I'm happy with that shape I can just accept it like this and the, sh the shape of the wall has been changed to whatever I want it to be there few other things we can do with that. If I select it again and edit the profile, you can also, you know, use it to uh, place openings in the wall, you know, whatever shape you want. Whoops, maybe that's a little bit too extreme. Let's put it like that. And it will just put the opening in the wall like that. So you can you can play with the shape of the wall. It doesn't have to be square either. Select it again, edit the profile, uh, and we can use this little radius tool here. And I'm going to make a radius of, let's say, 600 millimeters. And I can get these uh, elements to trim together. Do it again, one more time. Radius, 600. Like that. <coughs> so now if I change it back to realistic view, you can see that, you know, you've got the beginnings of it, you can make any shape of wall you want in this way it doesn't necessarily have to be square and uh, so the way to do it is select it and edit profile if you don't want it to be if you want it to go back to what you want you just select it and you press reset profile it just goes back to a standard wall okay does everybody want to give that a go and then I'll uh, I'll give you a hand with it because it's actually quite a useful thing to know okay let's just put that back in there like that Okay, so that's how to deal with the uh, the profile of the wall along the top, and you can play with that, and you can get any shape uh, you want out of that. Now, if I go back into the architecture tab and I, I press the arrow under uh, wall again, just check I'm recording this. Yes, I am. <coughs> we have uh, a couple of options down here as well. We don't. I'm not going to talk about structural walls. We already talked about wall by face in the intro period. But what we have here is uh, two things called uh, wall sweeps and uh, wall uh, reveals. And a sweep is anything that runs along the wall uh, that has a shape to it, that has a profile to it. So if you look at the window here, we can see at the top at the roof here, there's a cornice. It's got the same profile. It just runs along the top of the wall. So this is how you uh, develop this type of, uh, this type of object within, uh, within Revit. So if I press wall sweep uh, and I run the cursor over a wall, you can see it starts to put a standard sweep in the wall, which is just basically a box. And it, also, it also puts it inside the wall. So there it is there. And you can kind of do things with it. You can flip it. <coughs> or you can, uh, let's see. You can flip it just by pressing this arrow here. It flips it up and down. And if I put it in like this, wall sweep. And if I press space, no, it doesn't, it doesn't flip with space. How do you flip this one again? <laughs> need to uh, offset it. If it's inside the wall like this, you can do a couple of things. Let's just see if we can flip it in here. Cuts wall, cut by inserts, profile, subcategory, corners. No, not in there. So you can offset it by the distance of the wall. Let's say we want to take it out by 100 millimeters and apply. So you can pop it out of the wall like that. You can also select it and uh, give it a material in here which is the same material dialogue as uh, as everywhere else but that's kind of the basics of it so if you select it you come over here to edit type and you can specify a material uh, that's kind of the basics of how you want to do it but the interesting thing about wall sweeps is when you make your own profile for a wall sweep <coughs> and uh, that's where we start to get into uh, uh, families in Revit, profile families. And this is the only time I'm going to talk about uh, families in uh, the first semester, just because it's so extremely useful, because families can get extremely complicated, but some of them uh, are simple and we can use them very well. So what I want to talk about here is just uh, profile families. And that's how you actually make the shape that you want to go onto the uh, the wall sweep here. So the way to make a profile for that is to go into the OR at the top here, press New Family. And this is this is where you always make 
uh, something that's that's not a building element, something that's not a, like a, a roof, a wall, a floor, a staircase, something that's outside of that, something that needs a little bit more um, uh, delicate uh, modeling, you go into a family. I'm going to press families. And we, sh we should get, you should get a family template that comes up like this. If you don't get a family template, stick your hand up and I'll have to come out and have a look at it. Okay, one so far. Two, three, four. <laughs> oh, quick. I'll just go through the principle first. Um, so if I go into uh, the English template here, I get, you probably can't do this if you don't have it, but does, do people have, do anybody have family templates coming up on their version? Yeah. You got the English one. Okay. You should have the English one, but anyway, I'll have, I'll have a look at that. So we go into uh, metric, and uh, what I'm looking for is this one here. It's called metric profile. So this is just a template to set up uh, the, the profile that we want for the, um, for the sweep. So I'm going to open this up, double click, and it opens up a new design environment. It's not a project environment. It's called a family environment, which is, which is more specific. In here, I can use this line tool <coughs> to just draw the shape of whatever profile I want. Let's say we're going to make something like that cornice up there. So I'm just going to draw something like this. Let's just put a curve in there. Uh, which one I don't want? Start and radius curve. Let's put a curve in like this. Take a line down. It's fairly classical uh, cornice here. But everybody kind of rec recognizes the shape of that. It's what you would get in a, in a neoclassical uh, building uh, taken from the Greek or the Greek architecture. Once I, once I make it, I can give it a name. So I'm going to save it. Save as family. And I'm just going to put it on the desktop for the moment. So we have it there. And it's always good to save your profiles because you can use them again. So it means you don't have to draw them every time you want to use it. You should make a, a library of all this stuff. So I'm just going to call it uh, Cornus profile save <coughs> and once I've got it saved and I've got it a na uh, given it a name I can load it into the project by pressing this button up here I'm, go I'm gonna do this I'm gonna finish it and then I'm gonna do it again slowly and I'm gonna help you guys with it so we'll take some time over it load into project so now it's existing in the project we can't use it yet because uh, we haven't put it into the right uh, the right type of, uh, of element but if I go to the 3d view um, I should be able to select the wall sweep and uh, edit the type <coughs> and then the profile that we've just made you can see turns up here so in the properties of the wall sweep it you get a chance to select the shape that you want and we have this profile so I'm gonna say uh, corners profile we could give it a material we could make it uh, concrete let's say let's say it's just lightweight concrete Okay, and if I apply it, you can see that it turns up upside down in the uh, on the wall here. So then we can use these two little arrows to flip it so it goes the right direction like that. So then you have a, a profile that looks something like this. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm going to pause that and uh, give it. Okay, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going here, but I'm just going to, uh, because this profile thing is, uh, it seems like a, a small thing, but it's actually really important. So, for example, if I was going to make a, uh, a staircase, uh, so let's make a stairs here, just to show you. I'm not going to talk about stairs in detail today, but uh, uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a stair. Uh, yes, I'm recording. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to make a stair by sketch. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick stairs just straight over here uh, and accept it. So it makes a stairs for us. Uh, and this is kind of the standard uh, Revit uh, stairs, monolithic stairs, and the standard Revit rating that they give you to start with. But if I wanted to change the rating, I can change the profile of the handrail to whatever I want. So I could make it a very you know, well-designed handrail. Uh, and it's the same process. So I select the, uh, the railing, uh, edit the type. Uh, I can change the rail structure up here. 
And you can see we also have the same profile option here. So I can come into the profile and change it to uh, the cornice profile, for example. Apply. And you can see that now our handrail has got these, these enormous uh, cornices. Now, that's probably not realistic, but uh, if you're a Michelangelo or something, maybe it is uh, realistic. But, but, uh, but you can change the profile. The point is, if I go in then and go back into the family, which I had uh, open here, cornice profile, I can come back and uh, I can delete all these lines if I wanted to and change it to, uh, by pressing create, line, I could change it to maybe something a little bit more, uh, let's just try and make it something like that, and then, what the hell we do this one, here, whoops, we can kind of play with the shape of it uh, until we get something that, uh, looks like, you know, a designed handrail. If I then reload that back into the project, uh, intro project, it's asking me, do I want to overwrite the existing version? And if I say yes, I go back into where the, the stairs is and the handrail has been updated. So you can see what you can do with profiles is that you get to control the detail of all of these elements that just always run in long, uh, long um, horizontal elements in the project. Okay. Similarly, if we're dealing with uh, sweeps which are external to the wall, we also have an option to deal with reveals, which are bytes that you want to take out of the wall, like that. So you can take a little element out of the wall, and that's also controlled by profiles. So I'll go over here and edit this reveal. Uh, you see, you see, we get the same thing. Profile. So if you can use that handrail profile I just made, you get a tiny little handrail bitten out of the wall there. So sweeps and reveals. Sweeps are external and reveals are internal to the wall. Okay. So what I've been talking about so far is uh, I'm going to delete them now. Is I've been making sweeps and reveals that are just individual and specific to one wall only. But you can also add them to the wall itself, and this is really useful if you're doing. Uh, different types of walls that are just continuously the same thing. So if I select this wall here, come over to edit type again, uh, I can edit the structure of the wall. And last week we talked about uh, adding layers to the wall, if I put the preview on over here, so we can add layers to the wall. Uh, and we can just continue to do that just by inserting uh, different layers and giving them a thickness up here, for example. We can change the we can change this, the wall to whatever we want with any with any material we want. Delete that again. But we also have the option if we go into uh, section view. If I change that to section view here, which is a long section through the wall, is that we can actually um, add sweeps and reveals directly within the wall type. So I can say, okay, I'm going to put a sweep in here, load the profile from anywhere we want, or add the profile from within the uh, project itself. Let's put a cornice profile in there. <coughs> and we get an option to put it at whatever height we want. So I just press uh, apply here. You can see it turns up at the bottom of the wall. Let's change that from the cornice profile to the uh, test profile. Apply. I wish I hadn't changed that cornice now. It would look a lot prettier. But anyway, never mind. Apply. Uh, we can give it a material. We can give it a distance from either the base or from the top. So I can put it at the top, apply. We can put it on the external side or the internal side of the wall. Uh, we can flip it or we can set it back or we can you know, say it cuts the wall or whatever. So we can add as many uh, profiles as we want um, directly to the wall type itself. So I say test profile here. And this one we're going to put at the base. And we're going to make it uh, external as well. We have two profiles here. I'm going to offset it by 300. Oh no, sorry, I'm going to give it this in 300 from top test profile. I've got 300 from base. External apply. And press OK. Where's the cornice profile? Yeah, 
something's gone wrong here. It's gone. Oh, it's gone way up at the top. Okay, let's look at that again. Let's kind of screwed that up. Sweep. Corners profile. I gave. I offset that as well. Excellent. Never mind. Apply. And then okay. So then it's actually updated all the walls of the same type to uh, to contain the uh, the profile. And this, I mean, it looks stupid in the example I've given you there, to be honest with you. But it is a benefit because you can just make a profile for uh, a skirting board, for example, that runs along all internal walls. Or you could make a profile for, uh, let's say you wanted to cut a channel out of the wall for, for electrical installations or whatever in all the walls of that type. You can modify the wall once and it will update globally. The nice thing about it, though, from the point of view of construction management is it's actually calculating the volume of all this stuff. So if we gave this a material, we said this, this sweep was concrete, Revit would calculate for us exactly how, much, uh, how many cubic meters of concrete there is in that, in that sweep as well, and that could come straight out of, the, of the, uh, the model without having to do any more work on it at all. So that's the real benefit of it, yeah. But it's only at the top, it's not on the... I've got this tiny little one at the top, yeah. the little handrail one I made earlier, and then I've got this big one at the bottom here. But in the round shape of the yeah. crazy shaped wall yeah. on your right now. Yeah. Zoom up there. Yeah. No, it doesn't follow, it never follows these. Okay. It only, a sweep only runs horizontally. Okay. Only horizontally. If you wanted to do this. That would be the top as well. That's yeah, straight. Exactly. There. Can you see the blue dotted line? Yeah. That's the top of the wall okay. horizontally. Um, but it will never follow this. You can get it to follow that, but that's getting to more complex modeling. Of this wall? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can see this one down here. You could, yeah. If I go back in and edit it, for example, first of all, I could just come in here and just add an extra sweep if I only want it on one wall. Let's say I just want to put another one in here. But that's only relevant for that specific wall. But if I wanted this round one to be uh, everywhere else, I select the wall itself, edit the type, come into the section view. You have to have the section view open. Edit the, uh, the structure. And then I can change the sweeps here. And at the moment, there's two in there. But let's say uh, I'm going to add another one in here with the same profile. And this time we're going to offset it uh, minus 600 from the top of the wall. And we want it to be external. Now, is that going to work? There it is. So then, so then it pr turns up in the, in the wall section here, in the kind of the preview of it. I press OK and OK. And now it's put it around the wall lower down. So you can just continue to add sweeps to a wall. Uh, if I then select this wall and stretch it up, you can see it always maintains its relationship to whatever side you put it on, whether it's the top or the bottom. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. <coughs> now, what do I want to talk about next? OK, let's go back into the wall itself again. So let's just talk a little bit about the wall itself. If I select the wall again and come over to Edit Type, we have this wall with all the, the crazy stuff attached to it. But um, what I'm concerned about now is the actual wall structure, Edit the structure. <coughs> In here, we have uh, concrete lightweight, we have a thermal air layer, and we have siding clapboard. So I want to be able to control how this displays uh, on the drawings that I have. It's look, it looks fine in this high quality uh, 3D view, but if I wanted to turn up in a drawing in the right way, I need to be able to control the hatch pattern that, that, it, that uh, happens when I cut through the wall. So if I select concrete lightweight, for example, and press this button here. It goes into this materials dialog where the top half shows all the materials that are existing in the project and the bottom half shows a material library outside the project that we can insert if we need them. It gives us a graphics uh, tab here that uh, is telling us how the wall is going to display with a surface pattern and a cut pattern. 
At the moment, the surface pattern is set to none, and the cut pattern is set to solid fill. So if I go OK, and OK, and I draw a section through that wall by going into level one, and going into section, and draw a section through the wall here. This is what the wall looks like when you cut through it. It's got this kind of gray pattern where the concrete is. It's got nothing showing where the uh, it's got nothing showing where the insulation is, and it has this just blank pattern where the uh, where the timber is. So let's go back in and edit that. So edit the type. Go back in to edit the structure, and let's come. And first of all, we'll talk about the concrete. So here in the concrete graphics dialog I can change it from solid fill I'm gonna change it to like a concrete hatch here we have a concrete hatch press OK <coughs> uh, and we have also have this appearance option for the photographic quality of the image and at the moment it's set to this this pretty good uh, concrete so we can leave it at that all we're concerned about is the drawing quality if I apply this now press OK I need to turn up the detail on this in order to see it. it. You can see there that it's made, can you see that on the board there? It's made a concrete pattern within the wall here. So, so the drawing is now telling us, it's giving us information about what is actually happening uh, inside, the, uh, inside the wall. We can repeat the exercise with the, uh, the timber pattern, edit the type, edit the structure, and I'm going to go into siding clapboard, you get the same thing again. At the moment, the cut pattern is set to none. We can select it, or we could change it to. Uh, what if they have any good wood? Well, yeah. These are probably not good wood ones, but anyway, let's just use these ones for the moment. Say OK. Apply. And OK. So now we've got wherever the wall is cut, we get uh, information regarding buildup of the wall uh, in the in the section line itself and that that is uh, continuous throughout the um, throughout the entire project so if I changed what the concrete looks like in this wall if I use the same type of concrete in the floor or in the roof or something it will automatically have those settings already set up and ready to go you don't need to change it again it's a, it's a global thing that changes across so that's one thing does that make sense mm -hmm. Do you want to give that a go? Yeah. yeah. So the actual, it's, it's the same dialogue again. If I select this wall here, come over to edit type, and I go back into edit the structure, this is the thickness in here. So at the moment, the concrete is set to uh, 120. But if I say, OK, the, the structural engineer says we need 200 mils of concrete in there, if you watch the dialogue, or if you watch the preview on the left there, it just, it just does it. Uh, so you can control the thickness completely. Uh, it's completely uh, controllable in here. If I press OK then, and if we watch the, uh, the section as I apply it, it's, it changes the wall straight away, and it changes it globally across all the walls at the same time that have the same wall type. So it's changed it in the section view, it's changed it in the plan view, uh, and of course it's changed in the 3D view. So everything you change in any view in Revit changes in all the views. OK? So do you want to give that a go? Playing with the edit type. OK, guys, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll finish up with just with some, some of the more fun elements of, of Revit, if, if anything is fun about it at all. I don't know. But I'm, t I'm just going to talk about like photographic renderings and how you start thinking about photographic renderings. This, it's very important that you sign in. You see at the top right-hand corner here, I'm signed into Autodesk 360 with my uh, Autodesk ID. You can't do high-quality renderings unless you, um, unless you sign into uh, to, uh, Autodesk. It's because the, the high-quality renderings, they actually don't happen in your computer. They get sent to uh, Los Angeles or somewhere where they, they happen on some kind of server farm, and then they get sent back. Uh, because the, the light calculations are so complex that these computers would take, you know, 
a week to to do the to do the renderings. Um, so we can start by doing uh, one on the computer as a kind of a test render, and then we can send it to uh, to Autodesk 360, and they'll give us a, a more complex one. So the first thing we need to do is to set up a camera. So if I go into level one here, <coughs> I've got a plan view. I want to set up a camera so that I can see what the inside of, the, of this, uh, this house I've made looks like. So at the top here, beside the R, it was up here, camera. And I choose the point that I want to take the view from. And then you can see that we actually get a view from the camera. So we can rotate it around until we see where we want to look. So I'm going to look over here. And that's kind of the view from inside the, uh, inside the room we've made. We can also change the zoom length of the camera very easily just by stretching the edges of the view out. It starts to get unrealistic after a certain point of view because the perspective becomes very uh, stretched. But you can kind of play with uh, you know, what you want to see in the image uh, by stretching the views. The one it gives you by default, I think, is a, is a 50 millimeter camera, which is a, a, normal, a normal size camera or whatever. Once we have the view set up, we can change the shading of it down here at the bottom. We can change the visual style to uh, shaded, or we can change it to uh, consistent colors, which is just basically everything is the same color. We can change it to realistic, which gives us some idea of what the material looks like. At the moment, it's just concrete. Or we can change it to ray trace. If I switch on ray trace, it actually has to think about that because it's starting to calculate some of the, uh, some of the lighting in there. So you can see it starts to uh, show the shadows and so on. I'm going to switch that back to uh, realistic. And we can also just come over here to the right, this tiny little button down here, shadows off, shadows on. I can just switch the shadows on here to, uh, to give us a view like that. This button here. So once we do that, and let's say, uh, well, we can also play with it here. If I come over here to this uh, navigation wheel, if I click on this, and I can use this look button, which is here. If I select that and hold down the left button, I can look around from the point of view that I'm in. And I can use the arrow keys just to take a stroll around the building if I want to, while I'm looking, while I'm looking around. Yeah, so it's kind of a video game uh, thing. But, uh, but it's an easy way to set up your, uh, your point of view so, um, so you can very quickly uh, get it in the right, uh, in the right position. Let's go, uh, I'm trying to think what's going to make a good image. But I don't think anything's going to make a good image in this building. So. so let's just try and see what we get out of it. If you look in the background there, the further we go away from the building, it's starting to disappear. And that's to do with view clipping. So we can switch that off. Over here on the right, we have something called far clip active. And that's to uh, remove information uh, in very complex scenes where you, where you have maybe lots of stuff uh, that you don't want to show in the view, uh, and it's still going to render them for us. But in this case, it's a very simple scene, so we can switch it off, and it'll show us everything in the view. Just by clicking this, uh, this little tick box on and off here, we'll uh, switch off the view clip. We can also set the offset of it, how far away we want it to be, and so on and so on. <coughs> so I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to go to orbit this time. Sorry, just going to go. This is, again, sorry, do that again. Select the uh, navigation wheel, and we can choose orbit, and then we can just kind of rotate it around. Or uh, we can pan it up and down, or we can use look tool. They all have kind of different um, effects as to how they, uh, you know, they change the orientation of the view for the uh, for the model itself. Okay. So let's say we've chosen this viewpoint as the the view we want to render, and we want to have a high quality. Uh, then we can go up into view, and here we have these render tools. This one is this little teapot here is called uh, render, which is it's going to calculate the light and the materials within the computer itself. Uh, and this is usually a good one to do if you're just maybe trying to figure out what kind of lighting you want to have in here. So if I select that. Uh, I can choose a, a draft view. We don't want it too high detailed because we don't want it to be uh, take too long. Uh, we can choose the type of sun we have, uh, sun, sun and artificial, artificial or uh, internal. 
because the lighting in Revit is not the prettiest lighting, it's not the prettiest design tool, but it's accurate. It actually is accurate and it's been tested to be accurate. So if you put light fittings in your Revit model, the light that comes from them is actually accurate uh, according to uh, uh, you know the real calculations of how it's supposed to be. Uh, and we have some adjustments in, t in terms of haze, uh, how, cl how cloudy we want the background to be, and all this kind of stuff as basic, uh, as basic setup. If I then just press render there, we get a render progress dialog at the top here, and it goes and thinks about uh, rendering a draft version of the, uh, of this, of the scene we've made. <coughs> and you can see it's not very high quality, uh, uh, especially for such an ugly building, but anyway. It's, uh, but it gives us an idea as to how the lighting is going to uh, work within the scene. If I think it's too dark or too light, I can come to adjust exposure, and I can turn the ex exposure value up a little bit, and apply it, and it can change the brightness of the image to whatever I want it to be until we get the lighting more or less right. We can also change things like saturation. I can make it more colorful, or I can make it less colorful within these, uh, this dialogue here. And I can take, take the shadows, I can make them darker until, the, until we get something that we think looks okay. Then we have the option of either doing a high quality render here, which is going to take hours on your, on your laptop. Or if we're happy with the way we've got it set up, we can come out of that and we can go to this other uh, teapot, which is called Render in Cloud. If I select that, this is why you have to be signed into Autodesk 360. If I select that, you get this uh, little dialog, just press continue. <coughs> And now it's actually opening up a, a, a dialogue that's based on the internet. It's going to take the information we have uh, and it's going to take it to uh, cloud servers and render it uh, on cloud. You can do this for free. Uh, for some reason, they've started counting down the number of times I can do it, but, uh, but students should be able to do it for free. Uh, the way Autodesk makes their money is, is that if you're an architect's office and you want to do it, you have to pay for these cloud credits. So you pay for the opportunity for, for to do this stuff. Um, so let's say 3D view one, we're going to make a still image. We have the option to make an interactive panorama or an illuminance. I'm not going to talk about that until later. Uh, render quality we can set to final. We can change the image size to, uh, let's just make it large. Uh, and uh, we just leave the rest as it is. And if we're happy with that, we can select email me when complete and then start rendering. So it's uploading the information that we've we've created to the cloud, uh, and the nice thing about this cloud render is, once it uploads it, it takes a minute or two to to upload it. Then you can continue working on your project, continue in background. Whereas if you're rendering on the computer itself, you just need have to leave the compu computer alone for uh, for days. Some of my work when I was a, a self-employed as, as a self-employed architect was doing rendered images in AutoCAD and 3D Studio for other companies. I had to leave the computer sitting for weeks and weeks at a time sometimes to do, uh, so I had to have a computer specifically for rendering. But now they just, uh, they've just outsourced all that kind of stuff, so it's massively improved. Uh, so you can continue to work on your project, and up here in the right-hand corner you can see there's something happening. It's actually continuing to, uh, to render. So if I select this, I can go and say, I want to see what the, what's happening in the render progress. I click on render progress, and it's going to open up the website where the render is happening. So these are, this is kind of where your, uh, your account is sitting, your Autodesk account is sitting, and it's going to have all the renders that you've done uh, in, the la you know, in, in the last uh, period of time. So at the moment, this one is ticking away. It's only just started going, but I'm just going to show you what is possible with it. Just let's have, what have I got down here? <coughs> Previous renders I've done. Uh, not this one. I think this one. Now one of these is a. Panorama. I'm not sure which one it is, though. <laughs> Let's just see what this one looks like. Uh, 
I'm not I'm not using this as an example of a good render because these these were tests. But uh, just to show you the possibilities that the, that there are in here, if I can get this one to uh, to work, if I can find the right one. <laughs> yeah, this one. You have the opportunity to do a uh, a panoramic render. It's called. So it doesn't just render it as a uh, as a, a single fixed view. You can render it so that you can email this to your client, where he has the opportunity to go inside the building. And then just use the mouse, if you can see that on the screen here, it's not such high quality. Use the mouse to, uh, to look around. So this is called a panoramic render, uh, which is a nice way of presenting something to a client. If, it's a, if you make a very high quality render, you send them a link uh, to the website. And this, this render will then take up the entire screen of his, uh, of his browser. And he can see, uh, he can basically stand inside the house and have a look around while, uh, while the design is in progress. And it's a very powerful tool. Uh, to use, so that is an option within within rendering. If you go into Cloud Render, and instead of choosing uh, still image, you can choose uh, interactive panorama. Then you can very quickly create this very slick interactive uh, view of your uh, of your of your scheme. Okay, I think I think that's enough talking today. Let's just go back and see how how the render is doing, whether it's come out yet. You can roll back up to the top here. <coughs> there it is. So, it doesn't look like anything special, but uh, if there was glass in there, if there was different materials, if we'd spent some time setting up the, the, the model correctly, uh, all the, uh, the lighting, the shadows, and everything would have been cal calculated correctly based on the location in the world that we placed the, uh, placed the image. So, it's something to, uh, to definitely play with. Okay? So, I think that's enough. Any questions about that? <coughs>